All right, here we go. This is part one of something that I call a repositioning step. I wrote a blog about it. This is just a video to follow up with the blog to kind of point out some examples of when you can use this repositioning step. And remember, the repositioning step, re repositioning our feet is not considered a false step. Some of these things I think old school coaches might see and say, well, that's a false step. Don't false step. We're going to eliminate a false step. You have to be moving forward. You have to be productive on that first step. And I, I think that way of thinking is just wrong. And I think that there are better ways to do it to where we can be even more productive than trying to not false step. So again, this is part one, repositioning step. We're going to talk about how I classify uh, and break down different types of repositioning steps. So this first one is going to be what I call a back foot displacement. And all that means is we're going to initiate moving the back foot in the stance and start to help us move and accelerate in the direction that we want to go. So Tyree Kill will be the first one up here. Have a have a short video, a little longer than a minute uh, of clips that I can break down. Some of them will fly through, some will break down a little bit quicker. Um, but in this scenario, okay, Tyree Kill, we're talking about back foot displacement. It's going to be his left foot. So the foot that's exactly on the 20 yard line there. All right, and all we're gonna see is how he moves his back foot to help push him to go the direction that we that he wants to go. So his right foot's really not doing anything in this situation. His left foot is what comes forward first. Okay, so he's not stepping towards the defender. He's not pushing through his front leg to move towards the defender. He's simply repositioning his feet Okay, he doesn't gain ground. He's repositioning his feet. And now he has the angle, the shin angle that I talk about in the blog post. We'll point it out here. This shin angle here will help him run this drag route across the field. And again, that's the idea of a repositioning step. We're naturally repositioning our feet to be able to push the direction that we want to go. All right, and again, I break this down in a, in a blog article. This is the video to follow up with it, just so we're on the same page and you could see examples of what we're trying to do. So you see he gets that left foot in front. Now he's able to push to get across the field. Here's another example here. Now, rather than bringing his back leg forward, he's going to kick his back leg inside. So his back leg is actually going to move to the left slightly, and that's going to help him push to the right. See his back foot shifts to the left. Now he's in a better position to accelerate to the right side to run this go route here. Okay, obviously he comes back inside, but the point of that was to stem and get that DB off of his line before he breaks back inside. Okay, another example. Here's Cooper Cup against the Tampa Bucks. Watch his back foot. Similar idea to what Tyreek just did. He repositions his right foot, his back foot, so he can stem out to number 24, the DB that he's running this route against. I really like this route. It's We called this a jig. Typically, we ran this more across the middle of the field, working off of a linebacker, but I like this on the outside. It's essentially like an out, fake swirl, if you want to call it that, or a whirl or a swirl, which would be just an out and whip back in. And then he just continues. Little pause, just freezes the defender and creates that separation. But again, we're looking at the stance and start, the initial stance and start. These aren't false steps. They're just repositioning steps. This one, his foot's going to go to the outside of his body. Watch his right back foot. Cooper Cup is right here. Okay, if you're following the cursor right above the, the sky cam there. Kicks his right foot back to win inside here. Okay, so he wants to run this route to the inside of the field. Doesn't need to change his stance and start. He's comfortable. Right foot kicks back. Then he's able to push because he has the angle to be able to push. He has the advantage to be able to push because of the angle that he creates with that shin. Jefferson here, he's just going to do a speed release. 
back foot moves. This isn't a false step. This is a very productive step. When his back foot moves, watch how his hips turn. Now his hips are moved and he's in position to push harder and get down the field faster to run a go route. Reposition the back foot, reposition his feet, push, take off. Now he could get to full speed faster because he's able to get into his acceleration pattern faster. Here's Jamar Chase, another press opportunity. Some receivers will use this repositioning step just to get square to the DB, especially in press or bump coverage like this where the DB may jam. So he wants to get square. He also wants to release to the outside. Foot comes inside, back foot's moving. Again, back foot displacement. He's able to push. He sees that he has a bail technique and he just runs. Here's Chase again using a similar idea, repositioning his back foot, sees that he has bail technique, and he takes off. Jamar Chase again, he does this, this uh, back foot displacement a lot. And again, it's just to gain leverage. It's to push a certain direction rather than straight ahead. Keep going here, we got a couple more clips. But you can see the pattern. You can see the back foot being displaced. It's not just an immediate push from where we start in our stance and start. Back foot shifts. He's able to now run to his right or left if you're looking at the screen. And that just gets that DB square. Okay, again, these are the best guys in the world that... Some coaches, again, old school coaches, I, I associate this with more, with the, the harping on the no fall steps. It's unproductive to your route. It makes you slower. It's going to mess up the timing with the quarterback. And I'm just not buying it. The best guys in the world do this, and they have been doing this for a long time. It's the body's natural reaction to run and accelerate in the direction that they want to go. Here's another example, and I know he's running in motion here, but I just want to show how the body reorganizes. In this position, he couldn't move to his right. He doesn't have the angle of either shin to push in that direction. So when he goes in motion, watch how his back foot kicks. Whether this is motion or he's running a drag route, he would do this exact same thing. Okay, now you see he has the angle. Let's bring up the brush. He has the angle here through that shin to where he can now push and get across the field. And again, this is a motion, so I don't want to confuse you with, with running a route, but he would take that same angle, very similar angle, and have a very similar uh, reaction to a stance and start in repositioning his feet if he ran a drag route or had to get across the field. And here's the example here. Here's a drag route that he does run. Watch his back foot repositions it, now he has the angle, and there he goes across the field. It's not slowing him down by any means, it's simply giving him an advantageous position to push. Here's Jerry Rice. Again, I know I mentioned that even back in the day, guys were doing this. All right, your coaches may have been harping on no false steps back then, and again, you can argue that, well, this is press coverage, it's a different scenario. but I'm not gonna call out Jerry Rice for a false step. Back foot kicks out so he can speed release inside on the DB and get to his route. Another example here, a little better angle so you could see, watch his right foot, there he goes. Cool, that's it. Back foot displacement repositioning step, use it. It helps. Be natural with it. Push and take off.